Don't worry, it's not coffee. Uh, a little bit of uh, chocolate bone broth, a little bit of uh, clear butt detox powder that we use, some coconut oil, um, Raza, kind of this coffee alternative, and that's my little pick-me-up all morning long. So welcome, good to see you guys. Uh, we're doing live Q&A today, and this is our Thursday, 8.30 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Uh, be here every week, not just for you, but it's interesting because you get to see people all over the world asking questions, all types of different things, and yeah, I'll answer to the best of my ability. If I don't know something, that's fine. I'll, I'll let you know that. Um, but otherwise, pop your questions down below. Love to see uh, all types of different things. You can talk about thyroid or immune system or you know, shots or no shots or whatever it is. And in the parameters that we can here in the, in the social media world, I will answer those questions. So um, love having you guys on. Pop down where you're watching from. You, we get people all over the country, all over the world. World and uh, just love seeing you guys and educating and you know basically inspiring to go to that next level of health because everybody it doesn't matter what walk of life you're, you're in you know that if you're in pain if your body's not working well if you're tired if you're uh, having all these issues you are not a happy camper so all right um, hey got a first question already Susan great to see you what can I do for kill off of now Natural overgrowth. Um, I am assuming you're talking about uh, uh, gut uh, overgrowth. Uh, Susan, great to see you. Um, you know, it could be um, could be vaginal maybe you're talking about, but if it's gut overgrowth, if there is like yeast, bad bacteria, things like that, it's not just taking a probiotic. That's not going to fix it. So we have to do our kill off first and then we bring in the probiotics. So uh, yeast, yes, yeast overgrowth. So if it's yeast in the gut, you're gonna feel um, gas, bloating, it's gonna feel kind of puffy, all these things. And what you need to do is kill off first. Um, uh, Brittany, go ahead and pop down below a link to the ADP on, uh, on Fullscript. It's one of our favorite, it's a, uh, a yeast time release yeast kill off, uh, oil of oregano gets in, kills off a lot of the bad stuff, and then you bring in those probiotics. So, uh, but you also have to get rid of all sugar, anything that is feeding, uh, feeding that, uh, that yeast and that bad bacteria. So get rid of sugar, basically take sugar out for 30 days, nothing but meat, veggies, maybe some low glycemic fruits, nuts and seeds, some of that stuff, and that is going to be helpful. All right. And Laura, <laughs> why do I feel so bloated after eating a normal uh, locale meal? Sometimes lately, even with an empty stomach, I feel bloated. So if somebody is bloated all the time, so here, here's what we look at. Digestion starts in the mouth, goes down into the stomach, goes down in the small intestine, goes down the large intestine. Through that, bile's kicked out of the gallbladder for fats. Uh, enzymes are kicked out of the pancreas to break down carbohydrates, etc. And uh, in the stomach, we have more of a stomach acid protein digestion going on. And so if you have a hard time breaking down protein, if you've lost your taste for meat, if uh, high, high protein meals just kind of sit in the stomach, you need stomach acid. If you're bloated all the time and it's just like, man, I look pregnant, doesn't matter if I drink water or don't eat or whatever, that's usually SIBO, S-I-B-O. Uh, you can call it small intestine bacterial overgrowth. Um, but ultimately that SIBO is going to be bad bacteria, bad stuff coming in from the large intestine into the small intestine, and then we're going to have this fermentation, bad bacteria, it's just gonna be, if somebody's bloated all the time. So with that SIBO, you gotta go in and do some heavy duty kill off to get rid of that SIBO. The other thing you need to look at is that vagus nerve that we've talked a lot about. So gag yourself, if you don't have a gag reflex, your uh, valve in between the small and large intestine is not working like it's supposed to, the ileocecal valve, IC valve, and if that is not working, Bad stuff gets up into the small intestine, and uh, here's one of the interesting things, one of the best things you can do for your vagus nerve. Give me a thumbs up if anybody's heard of the vagus nerve, vagal nerve tone, anything like that. It's not gag gargle hum. Unfortunately, 
those, you know, they're okay, but they don't really work that well. It's a coffee retention enema. Coffee retention enema, you do pretty heavy duty uh, load of, of a coffee enema. Yep, there's some people uh, hearing about that vagus nerve. Uh, let me know if, we may not get me a thumbs up. Let me know if anyone has tried the uh, uh, coffee retention enema, but you do that coffee enema and you hold it and you hold it and you hold it and it stimulates the nerve receptors that are going to help fire that vagus nerve and it can be one of the best things you can do for, um, for this SIBO. All right, um, could you offer any suggestions for relief from levator ani syndrome? Thank you, Nancy. Um, the one of the best things you can do. Look up people that do um, AMIT. A M I T. Let me know where you're where you are, and there may be a doctor close by that we can recommend. But there's certain muscles in that pelvic floor. It can, you could also look up M A T practitioners, muscle activation technique, or A M I T, advanced muscle integration technique. Either of those. They have the skills to go in and isolate the specific muscles that are related to that pelvic floor and can really make a big difference there. So, um, great question. And Kathy, great to see you. Kim, what can I do for fibromyalgia? I think the, there's something else going on. Hey Kim, this is a great question. And this is, every one of you that has watched any of my Q and A's before, you know that as soon as somebody says, what can I do for my fibromyalgia? The underlying thing that we're thinking is, why? Why is somebody diagnosed with fibromyalgia? Fibromyalgia is not a disease. Fibromyalgia is not a thing. It's a condition. It's a clump of symptoms and people go, oh my gosh, I've got fibromyalgia because the doctor did this, this poke test and I'm sore enough so now I have fibromyalgia. Well, it's not like you got this disease and now you have fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia can come from a lot of different things. And what we look at is it can be adrenals, it can be thyroid, it can be autoimmune, you can have Hashimoto's. There's a lot of other things that go into fibro and you've got to, just like everything else we do, if somebody comes in with MS, you got to do the same workup. You got to throw the net out there, do this broad blood work and figure out, is there inflammation? Is there blood sugar swings? Are the hormones out of balance? All these different things. And from there, we go step by step through the process of getting that, that fixed up. So here's the deal, Kim. Yes, I 100% guarantee that there is something else going on because fibro is not a thing that's going on. It's a clump of symptoms. So absolutely, you are on the right page. You gotta dig deep, you gotta keep looking. One of the first things this next week, take all sugar out of your diet. Start there. Just don't drink a single ounce of calorie um, into your body. Don't drink any calories coming in, no sugar change what you're doing with your foods. Um, you could even, if you, if you get real creative, take out all grains and all sugar for the next seven days, come back next Thursday and send a message and let me know what you're feeling like, because I almost guarantee it is going to be different. Uh, and uh, Melissa, do I need to stop my probiotics I've been taking to kill off uh, regarding the uh, ADP? Um, so, Melissa, yes, so for that, we always stop probiotics while we're doing some pretty heavy duty kill off. Um, so, yes, absolutely stop the probiotics and then do a round of probiotics. And you may need to go through a couple rounds of kill off. Um, with that. Derek, I'd love to um, get your take on this graph with family who doesn't see eye to eye like we do. I know these numbers are, you know what, Derek, um, summarize it uh, for whatever reason on the, on the live here. I, I can't see the whole message. And even when I see, say see more. So, um, you know, go ahead and summarize what you're, what you're saying there and we'll get back to that one. <laughs> Candy in South Carolina, great to see you. What are some things you can do for lymphedema and lipedema? So I've had patients, they come in and their legs are like literally tree trunks. You go dunk, 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 and it's like this solid rock. And within even 30 days, I've had ladies, they drop 30, 35 pounds. They're just getting rid of this, uh, this lymph and this uh, fluid, everything in there. So the first thing you need to do, and that every one of these patients has dramatic change from, is to stabilize your blood sugar. Um, if this is you or somebody you love, I almost guarantee that their blood sugar is not where it needs to be. Stabilize that blood sugar even within a week or two. 
weight's gonna be dropping off. And then if there's any liver issue, you gotta start making sure that liver is clearing out like it needs to. But lymphedema is usually coming from that inflammatory, inflammatory process, coming from the blood sugar issues there. Um, and Eric, great to see you in Tampa. Um, I can't paste a pic. Basically, the graph shows weekly cases of unvaccinated, skyrocketing over vaccinated um, by USA Facts. So he here's the deal. Um, Derek, I, I, I wish that we all have the right data and I wish that we could just go in and, and find data that is accurate, you know, whatever side. You know, unfortunately, there's a lot of, of data, a lot of statistics, a lot of facts that, you know, our people use. I, I mean, it, some people probably say I use statistics and facts to skew towards, um, you know, what I want people to believe or whatever it is. Um, but here's the deal. Here's what we do know. More people have died in 2021 with COVID than 2020. Um, um, we have more spikes, more infections around the world, and, and yet we've had way more people that have had natural immunity and way more people that have been vaccinated. And so something isn't right. You know, we continue to have these two, two and a half month um, waves. You know, we're on, what, the fifth wave now, where even the um, Spanish flu only had three waves. You know, wh why is that? And, and really, if, if it was, and I sent an email about this last week, uh, check your email box today, everybody. We, uh, we just sent an email out this morning. Check from last week too. I, I'm going to resend that email because it was one of my favorites, uh, but we only had 8% open rate. We're already up to like 15% today. So for some reason that one um, went into, uh, into junk mail. Not if that's maybe because of the content, if they can do that or not. But uh, anyways, um, here's the deal. Uh, it, it, what we're doing isn't working. And, um, you know, whether we're masked or unmasked, whether we're vaccinated or unvaccinated, whether we're running around, uh, you know, six feet apart or not, what we're doing is not working. There's still people, I know, I know people that are very, very healthy that uh, were not vaccinated that got sick two or three weeks um, and were down and out. I know people that were, were vaccinated, got, uh, got sick and, and got very, very, very ill. Um, so there's something going on. We know that this virus is evolving. We know that whether it's the Delta variant or whatever is going on um, is, is uh, definitely affecting people different than previous rounds. And um, we know that after six months, um, the shots are almost worthless. And that, that's why they're they're coming out with the boosters and really pushing for that. We know that this is going to keep evolving, and just like the flu, that uh, we can't outshot our way out of this. Um, you know, we can't even out supplement our way out of this, or even medication, whatever. It's gonna be here. It's gonna turn into a seasonal uh, coronavirus, seasonal uh, cold, flu, whatever it's gonna look like. And, and we're gonna have to learn to live with it and deal with it and just um, get our bodies as strong as possible. So uh, that's kind of where, where I'm at with things. It's not a, I'm not defeatist, but you know, we're, we're gonna have to deal with it. Uh, hey, Michelle, great to see you. Um, uh, Tracy and uh, Melissa, I mean, it's coffee, so I might. <laughs> we were talking about the coffee enema. So it's a coffee retention enema. Um, and you can actually get a little little caffeine <laughs> buzz from it. Um, but ca coffee retention enema, the best way that you can stimulate your vagus nerve. If you're constipated and you're constipated for, uh, for years and years and things aren't moving through like you need to, coffee retention enema um, two days in a row and then weekly after that and hold it and hold it and hold it and hold it. And it can make a huge, huge difference. Hey, uh, Kay? Kay, uh, do you think it's possible to detox any part of this shot um, after forcing on it? So, for one thing, nobody can force anything on anybody. Um, you know, so th those are all decisions. Those are all, uh, you know, there's a lot of lawsuits. There's a lot of things that, um, you know, even you look at Aaron Rodgers and he's getting a beat down. Um, the, uh, and yet, okay, he got fined $300,000 or whatever, he doesn't care. Um, you know, but he looked at it on an individual basis and said, you know what, my body uh, has issues with a couple of things in, in this kind. Um, he didn't want to take the risk 
risk with heart issues with the J&J, &J, and so he decided not to do it. So, you know, can anybody force anything on us? No, I mean, they, there's sacrifice, but even right now, it's in, it's in court, and, uh, you know, e even if somebody does get laid off from their job, um, there are legal ramifications, and there's a lot of lawsuits going out about that as well. So, you know, it, it, there is no absolute, but anyways, to answer your question, the thing that we see pre and post blood work is it's more of an inflammatory process than a tox toxification issue. So um, we're looking at this inflammation in the body and it really gets revved up and that's what stimulates that cytokine storm and everything. So you're know, really focusing on you know, your turmeric and your fish oil and just calming down that inflammation as much as feasibly possible. Um, Nancy in Pueblo, good to see you. And um, Alyssa, what vitamins should we be taking on a regular basis to help ward off COVID? Zinc, vitamin D, NAC, how much should an adult take? Yeah, I, I think that's a good starting point, the zinc, vitamin D, NAC. There's a lot of research on melatonin. Um, melatonin can be really helpful. Vitamin D, you need to get your vitamin D up to up to 60 to 80, so I don't know how much you need, but you need to test it and see how much you need from there to get into that 60 to 80 range. So um, what uh, what else should we be taking besides zinc, D, and AC? You can take some uh, vitamin C, you can take uh, some quercetin that helps drive that zinc into the cell. Those are all really good things you can do on a regular basis. Thankfully, this wave, um, except here in Colorado, we're, we're still going. We, we got a late start on this last wave. Um, but uh, thankfully, you know, Florida, Texas, a lot of places around the country, uh, th this COVID wave is pretty much gone. Probably isn't going to be back till um, January, February, something like that. If you look at just kind of that that rhythm of what's going on, um, you know, there's some things going on in Europe. We're usually two, three months uh, behind that uh, if there is another wave or if this is a different different uh, variant or whatever you know it'll probably be more of a of a February January type of a thing that we're looking at after the holidays so um, but yeah th that's a great great start there to do those um, and any other questions pop those down candy thank you for asking uh, asking for my mom she also has Hashimoto's so yeah Hashimoto's um, remember Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease that's either attacking the thyroid or atta attacking the bus that moves the thyroid around the body so Hashimoto's is not a thyroid disease Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease that is attacking so we've got to calm down that immune inflammatory cascade it's not just a simple ooh take take this magic thing or take your gluten out or whatever it is Hashimoto's same as MS same as rheumatoid or arthritis any of these, these these autoimmune conditions that we help people uh, squash down all the time you've got to look at it from that perspective um, what are your thoughts on MS being chronic Lyme so Jennifer uh, great question and um, you know for some people Lyme can be a big part of it and it can stimulate that immune uh, response so think about this uh, when I draw that circle, look, look at yesterday's video, I had autoimmune in the middle and one of the little lines coming off was infections, chronic infections. So Epstein-Barr is a huge stimulant into the autoimmune world. Lyme disease can be. Um, there's a lot of different infections, chronic infections that can drive MS or drive autoimmune of any of that. And so, um, uh, you know, unfortunately going down that, that uh, Lyme path is a slippery slope. There's a lot of different things. Some people go on uh, six years of antibiotics. Other people do IVs and it's just, it gets pretty darn intense. But ultimately you got to get the body strong first. You got to get it built up. I had two bullseye tick uh, tick bites uh, a bunch of years ago and I did a bunch of antibiotics and I know if I let my body get run down there's a very good chance that that Lyme will flare up so um, for, like for my mom it wasn't Lyme disease her MS was not Lyme disease she she healed her, her MS there was an emotional component there was um, some other physiological things but uh, definitely was able to, to repair from that um, Alexa my bi biological dentist thinks my fibromyalgia is triggered by my dental cavitations. Um, so here's the deal. Uh, fibromyalgia, again, this inflammatory process, kind of like think about the same as autoimmune, any of that stuff. So a chronic infection can definitely contribute to 
a beat down of the immune system and fatigue and all that stuff. So if you have dental cavitations, um, there's a chance, you know, it's probably 50-50 that that could make a significant difference. I've seen people spend $30,000 on their mouth and get no changes at all. And then other people do a few things and take out their mercury or whatever, and they feel way, way better. So unfortunately, there's no crystal ball that we can look at the eight ball and go, should I do this or not? Um, you know, it's kind of your, your tolerance as far as finances and everything else. Um, but it's one of those things that uh, is definitely worth looking into. Um, thank you for the emails. Love them. Keep them coming. Absolutely. So uh, can I redeem my email? I never got an email that I could use. Yes, absolutely, Melissa. So if anybody is on here, if you're not on our email list, send, a, um, send us a direct message for your email and we will get that on there. Uh, we'll, we just sent another one out today, but um, we'll try to get, get you guys caught up as well. So absolutely. Um, can you talk about candida overgrowth? How do you know if you have it and what to do about it? So candida, so again, if it's protein digestion issue, you're gonna get kind of gas bloated in the stomach don't like eating meat anymore. If it's SIBO, you're just kind of bloated all the time. Doesn't that eat, matter if you eat, don't eat, drink water, whatever it is, you're just kind of bloated all the time. The yeast will come and go, especially the candida, and that's gonna be lower in that large intestine where you'll get some bloating sometimes. Um, it'll kind of come and go in there, but especially if you drink you know, fermented like beer or something like that, if you drink sugar, eat sugar, feed that yeast a little bit, and you'll be like, oh, gas, bloating, any of those things. So you've got to, uh, you've got to know if it really is candida. I, look at your tongue, if it's got a really big white coating on there, um, there's a good chance that there's some candida in the body as well. The ADP that Brittany put a link to earlier on here, that oil of oregano, one of our favorite things for candida. So uh, one of the best things you can do is to go 30 days with no sugar, keep grains to a minimum, and just take that down as much as you can. Do not feed that yeast. Uh, basically, weekly COVID cases are skyrocketing among the unvaccinated or vaccinated. Um, yeah, uh, so Derek, hey, good to see you again. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, the, like I said, the, the data, it's hard to say what's going on because think about this. If, if, it, if this was really the case where it was just the unvaccinated um, and you know, what do they say now? Like 60%, 55% of the U.S. population is, is, uh, has had their shots. Um, that means, you know, in theory, if we didn't even have, have vaccines now, that we would have double the amount of cases right now. I, I find that hard to believe that this wave would have been like, you know, even way more than last December and February and even worse. Um, you know, think about it, because that's really what we're looking at. If, uh, if, if it's just the un, unvaccinated that are, are getting COVID, then, I mean, this wave would have been like, swamped everything else compared to what it was. So I, I don't know that the data that we're getting is pretty darn challenging to know um, who to trust, what's actually going on there. So um, uh, Legita, uh, can osteoporosis be reversed without meds? Uh, taking vitamin D, D3 and K2, increasing my exercise regimen and cut coffee consumption. Those are great things. Coffee, um, it's high in phosphorus. It can pull calcium out of the, out of the bone. Um, D3, K2, get your vitamin D up into the 80 range and then increasing my exercise. Make sure it is weight bearing exercise. So going and doing yoga is not weight bearing exercise. Doing uh, 20 air, air squat jumps, that's gonna be weight bearing exercise. Uh, stationary bike, um, spin class, those things is not weight bearing exercise. Going for a hike you know, with uh, going downhill and boom, 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 kind of putting that stress on your bones, that's weight bearing exercise. So uh, you've got to get your D D3K2, make sure you're doing weight bearing exercise, and then cutting that coffee is a huge part of it, um, unfortunately, for all those coffee drinkers out there. Um, uh, so here we go. Um, uh, Patricia, thanks for clarifying. So what I'm saying is we can't out supplement COVID. Absolutely not. You know, there's not gonna come a point like, man, we got enough people on vitamin D and took enough NAC or zinc or whatever it is, and now COVID is gone. That is not gonna happen. Can you support your body and support your immune system and keep your body strong so that it can do the best it can to fight it off? 
Absolutely. And yet, you know, there's still just like a cold or a flu. Some people do take really good care of themselves and they'll still get sick once in a while. So here's, here's what I mean is we can't out supplement, um, just like we can't out shot it and we can't do out anything to get rid of COVID. I mean, COVID is here to stay. It's going to turn into a seasonal, seasonal virus, but you've got to keep your body as strong as feasibly possible, not just for, for this one, but for the next one, for the uh, bac bad bacteria coming around, strep throat, staph infection, whatever it is, you've got to keep your body as strong as possible. That's where the supplements come into play. But are we going to beat it? Is it ever going to be gone because we got people healthy enough? Unfortunately, no. Um, however, this virus got here, uh, it's here to stay. Hopefully it starts um, fading away and is less intense over time. Time, but unfortunately, there's no amount of, of pills that we're going to get to that we're going to be like, oh, good, now it's gone. Um, yeah, Eric, some things can't be discussed. People will believe what they want as long as they want. Absolutely. Um, let's see, any other questions? Hey, Don, great to see you there in Tennessee. Um, can you take too much zinc? Uh, Jim, usually if somebody's taking too much zinc, uh, they'll get nauseous when they take it uh, and just feel kind of kind of yucky. We talked about a zinc taste test uh, where you have liquid zinc. Brittany can put a link down below for the um, uh, for full script on there. And so that liquid zinc, you take a swig of it. If it's really, really strong, you're getting enough zinc. Um, so don't take any more than that. But usually you'll feel some nausea if you're taking too much zinc. Um, I can't get my vitamin D over 46. Um, and Connie from Nebraska, uh, taking seven to 10,000 a day. So uh, either the brand, so it may not be the right right type of vitamin D, or uh, getting into a tanning bed even once a week is going to be helpful. So um, go, if you have any, I don't know where you are in Nebraska, but if there's a tanning bed, I know Scott's Bluff has one, North Platte has one that we've had patients go to. Um, Tracy, I've been working with uh, cranial nerves and vagus nerve resets, amazing results. Tracy, have you tried uh, the uh, coffee retention enema? Uh, let us know if you have. Hey, Vicki, great to see you. We're going to be driving by your way this afternoon, heading up to Sundance. Go uh, some deer hunting and um, candy. Yes, I'll be uh, calling you soon to get blood work results and setting up an appointment. Awesome. We look forward to seeing you, Candy. Um, again, our uh, Tennessee office, Colorado office, we're going to have our second one in the Nashville area. We'll be opening up in Denver um, in January as well. So uh, we look forward to seeing all you guys. And daughter is post-COVID, um, having pain around her ankles and strange sensation throughout the body. Uh, sh should she detox? Hey, Linda. Um, yeah, I mean, that's basically what, what we've got to do. I mean, people, whether it's from uh, COVID itself or from the shots, whatever is happening, we've got to just go through, get the inflammation down, stabilize. Um, the blood sugar, work on the liver, work on the gut, uh, inflammatory processes, whatever's going on in the body, yeah, you've got to get through that. Unfortunately, there's no like one size fits all. I'm like everybody needs this detox uh, post COVID, and uh, unfortunately, that that doesn't work. So uh, we've got to go through individualized, have her run a full blood panel, see what's going on. Maybe her adrenals are shot. There's a lot of other things, but you've got to take a step back and look at that whole body in order to get a good feel there. So um, I've got a couple more minutes here, so I'll see if we've got any more. Are all carbonated beverages bad? Mineral water, no. Um, you don't wanna get all of your water, all of your fluids through carbonated beverages, but if you're doing like a bubbly water or a Perrier, we've got one of those uh, soda streams. We'll do that every once in a while. Um, you know, Any of those uh, are good. I wouldn't do it right after exercise. It's not going to hydrate as well, so don't do carbonated beverages after exercise but yeah doing a mineral water uh, once a day isn't bad but don't get all of your water in that way you want to do just plain water as well um, uh, uh, Lisa thank you for the stars and uh, Tracy you've tried the coffee retention enema um, so yeah awesome uh, it, it's a it's a huge boost for that vagal nerve um, you can google google coffee retention enema and there's a lot that come up there 
and what can be done for hair loss coming from having COVID? Well, first you got to figure out why somebody's hair is falling out. And you know, is it the thyroid went haywire and their Hashimoto's flared up? Is it a uh, absorption issue? They're not getting their nutrients. Is it the adrenals are super stressed out and they're not able to uh, able to keep that hair? So you got to figure out um, why and what systems are out of balance. Is it okay to take NAC a few times a week if I'm also a high histamine? You know, with that one, you're probably just going to have to try it out, MC. Uh, try it out. See how your body feels. If you if you react at all, um, then don't do it. But if you if you feel pretty good with it, uh, then that should be fine. Um, what causes ridges on the nail bed? Uh, think uh, zinc could be one of those. Uh, it could also be a liver issue there. So. See what else? All right, we are caught up. So uh, awesome, guys. I got to jump, but um, super, super good having you guys on um, all over the place. Great questions. Remember, keep asking the why. Why is the body out of balance? It's not just, I've got fibromyalgia, what pill can I take? But you've got to get to the underlying why, figure it out, change your world, and we're going to see some massive, massive shifts to where the health of this nation and the health of this world truly starts changing. It doesn't come from a pill. It doesn't come, uh, hey, thanks Sherry, it doesn't come from um, you know, a, a drug, a surgery, any of these things, even a supplement. Health comes from within. Your body has that ability within it. So we need to stimulate, we need to support our body's ability to be healthy. Nothing from the outside can make us healthy. There's a lot of things that can make us unhealthy and there's things that can help nourish and support us, but nothing is going to make us healthy. That is on you. That is on what you put in your mouth, the thoughts you put in your brain, uh, the exercise and, and impact, and, and what you give to this world. So uh, stay strong, keep your bodies as vibrant as possible, and we'll keep doing our best to give you the, the information to do that. Take care, guys. Make it a great day.